Well, good day everyone. This is Chris with The Ancient Scholar. I know it's been a while since my last video. Uh, still having issues with the uh, screen editing, uh, screen capture software. Uh, they keep saying that they're they're working on it and, and so on and so forth. And, um, you know, frankly, I've, I've unfortunately, I've been just much, much busier than I thought I would be um, uh, this semester uh, because I, I, I ended up teaching a significant number of credits, uh, more credits than I um, had anticipated. And I'm taking um, 18 credits of my own uh, toward another degree that I'm working on. So, and plus working some other jobs uh, on the side. So, uh, things have been a little crazy. Um, but I, I wanted to get a video out today uh, simply because um, I wanted to respond to a question I was asked. I was uh, teaching a class today and we were talking about uh, thermodynamics and kinetics. Uh, is speci specifically the the laws of thermodynamics, and I was talking about um, entropy, and uh, specifically the concept of what's known as absolute zero. Um, it is it's a classical concept, and basically basically what it, what it, um, what it boils down to is that in theory, uh, if we were to get to this absolute zero zero degrees Kelvin, um, all Basically, there would be no kinetic energy in the system, no kinetic energy at all, and all molecular motion would stop. And, and you know, the molecules basically freeze into place, and, and probably you know, in whatever crystal lattice or whatever, freeze into place. There would basically there be zero entropy. There there would be no heat whatsoever. And um, you know, hey, it's a great concept, but it's impossible to get there we cannot get to absolute zero as far as we know and believe me we've tried we've gotten within you know pico kelvin um, you know temperatures we've gotten very close to absolute zero but we just can't you know there, there is no way to, to get down there um, to that absolute zero and um, one of the students asked me well why why can't we and I kinda hemmed and hawed a little bit and uh, ended up giving a pretty horrible answer to, to be quite frank uh, to be honest, and the answer I gave will basically boil down to because, um, and I just wanted to expand upon that just a little bit more uh, for the sake of the student um, more than anything that asked me this question. Um, if you remember, uh, when we talk a little bit about quantum mechanics. There's this there's this thing called the uncertainty principle, and it, you know, it says that the um, the uncertainty in the position and the uncertainty in the momentum. Uh, can only the can only be known to to about the order of, of the reduced Planck's constant. Um, beyond that, we we can't know with with, with absolute certainty position and momentum at, at the same time. Um, and when we take an electron and we confine it within an atom, uh, we're confining that electron to a very small area. You know, in a hydrogen atom, about one angstrom, 10 to the negative 10 meters, confining it to a very small area. Um, and uh, we know, through the Schrodinger equation, we can calculate the, the binding energy that binds the electron um, to, the, to the nucleus. We can calculate that energy exceptionally well, exceptionally accurately. And basically, what does that boil down to? Well, that, that tells us that we basically know the momentum very well. We know the momentum of an electron very well because we know its energy, uh, which means that we, are, we have a, a very large uncertainty in the position of the electron. Um, now, if I were to get an atom down to this absolute zero um, and all the motion were to stop, uh, you know, the theoretically, um, you know, the, the electron... Um, I suppose it would probably not move, and we know that's not the case. We know um, that because we confine the electron, you know, there is a big uncertainty in the electron's position, and that electron is always moving. It, there's always a certain amount of kinetic energy that the electron has to have. It has to fundamentally have that, um, and if it didn't, we would violate the uncertainty principle, and, um, you know, to date at least, uh, with our current understanding of the physical universe, uh, we cannot violate the uncertainty principle. Uh, so, no matter how hard we could possibly try to get to absolute zero, we simply can't because of quantum mechanics, uh, because of the uncertainty principle, because there is just simply no way that we know of that we can beat the uncertainty principle. So that electron is always 
going to have some, some, some type of motion, some type of kinetic energy. And you may hear the term a zero point energy or zero point motion. And that's literally um, the, the, the motion you know, of, of the electron moving around and it's uncertainty. You know, we can't stop the electron okay, at absolute zero and go, hey, look, there I can see the electron. Uh, that is absolutely forbidden by quantum mechanics. Um, maybe in the future, who knows, but, but certainly with our current level of understanding, um, that's how it goes. Um, so that's probably the most fundamental answer I could give is, is really it's a quantum mechanical thing and um, the whole concept of absolute zero is more of a, a classical concept, but uh, quantum mechanically uh, we, we would violate you know, a fundamental uh, principle of quantum mechanics uh, by going to absolute zero. So hopefully that's a little better uh, explanation. Okay guys, as always, thanks for hanging in there.